If you've ever driven a chassis which uses differential or skid style steering off of a single joystick or gimbal, then whether you knew it or not, you were using mixing. Mixing is simply put how it's decided to take the information from the joystick and translate that into how much power you should supply to each side of the chassis. If you take a look at the inside of your average joystick or gimbal, you're going to see two potentiometers. One that moves as you rotate the gimbal side to side, and that's the x-axis, and the other moves when you move the joystick up and down along the y-axis. Most transmitters have the capability of mixing the data before they're transmitted, uh, and most motor controllers have the ability to mix data after it's received into the motor controller. But if you're working on a project uh, where you're taking data from a digital joystick from an app, like I recently did, or you're just reading the potentiometer data directly from uh, a joystick like this into an Arduino or Raspberry Pi or something like that, it's going to be very useful to know how to take and do your own mixing and code. So I wanted to talk about a few different ways that you can go about doing that based on my recent experience. And I actually built a little simulator to show what it looks like when you apply different mixing algorithms. So this is the simulator I built. Um, it's basically a little web app. And you can see in the upper left hand corner, we have our grid showing how much uh, the joystick has moved. And so this will let me drag this little red ball around to simulate moving a joystick. Down here, you can see the X and Y coordinates of the red dot representing where the first and second potentiometer would be along its stroke. And then the left and right values here are showing what values are being sent to the left and right side of the robot in terms of percent of power after the mixing is completed. Now, I have various methods of mixing that I've set up here. And the first one I want to show you is if you didn't do any mixing at all. So if you didn't do mixing, any mixing at all, and you just pushed your throttle forward, you can see that one pot is not being rotated at all, the X potentiometer. And so that's basically still at zero. And the other potentiometer is pushed all the way forward. And so if you just connected your two different axes to the two different channels, the two different sides of your chassis, then uh, you would not be able to drive it as expected. Uh, but a while back, uh, Kyle, who you've seen on various videos on this channel, pointed out to me that if you're ever in a pinch and you don't have any mixing set up on your transmitter or on the uh, motor controller or whatever it's receiving, um, you can actually rotate your transmitter at a 45 degree angle and then pushing up is forward uh, on your robot. And you can see that here in the app. Um, as I drag this up at a 45 degree angle, obviously I'm going to positive 100 on the Y axis and positive 100 on the X axis. And so based off of that revelation, I made my first mixing method. Um, I just mathematically rotated the point around the zero point. Um, by 45 degrees. And so this purple dot that you may have noticed represents the new coordinate um, that you get after doing the mixing. So you can see as I rotate this around, that purple dot is just rotating around with it and it's staying 45 degrees away from the red dot. So this works fairly well, but you can see one drawback to this approach is if I push it, the stick, so to speak, all the way forward, I'm not getting 100%, I'm getting 71% of power to both channels, so I can't drive forward at full speed. If you're familiar with SparkFun, you may have seen their Adventures in Science video series on YouTube. In a recent episode of that, uh, Sean showed a very simple equation that he was using to mix the data that he was receiving from an RC receiver into an Arduino. I actually took and applied that algorithm here and you can see that in some ways it's going to be very similar to the rotate algorithm with the advantage of it lets you get 100% power in the forward direction. Now both of these equations have one drawback and that is the corners of your grid become 
pretty much useless. So if I drag this around and up here, if I could drag this at a perfect 45 degree angle, you wouldn't see any change at all in the amount of power being sent to those channels. So it's very similar to the rotate in that sense, um, but it does allow you to get full power. Um, and essentially there's using a constraint function to kind of clip those edges there. This does get you a long ways and it's a very good simple algorithm. It doesn't take a lot of processing power. Um, I haven't done any testing. I would imagine it's more uh, efficient than the rotate algorithm because uh, less math is being done to it. Um, so I took this and I springboarded off of this to create my own algorithm, which I call proportional. Now, don't get me wrong, clipping off these corners is fine if you're using a joystick like this Xbox controller here, which uh, limits your movement and you never actually get up into the top right corners anyways. Um, but if you have other styles of joysticks or gimbals or you're making your own, it's nice to be able to use the full sweep of the movement that you have. If I switch over to my proportional algorithm here, as you drag it forward, you can see it's proportionally moving all the way from zero to the very top of the grid and all the way from zero to the very right side of the grid. But the trick here is that it's also moving proportionally all the way to the top right corner. Um, and so it's utilizing every iota of that graph, um, which is kind of a tricky thing to do because the distance between here and here is much shorter than going across the hypotenuse from here to there. But with a simple modification to the algorithm, we're able to take advantage of that entire space in a very proportional way. And so that's the algorithm that I used in a recent project, which you'll see in Control Issues, our series where we build projects. Finally, I have just a preference option here, which I call Mirror Reverse. Um, without it, you can see as I go back into the right, my robot is going in the opposite direction as you might expect it to go. And it makes a lot of sense when you drag the joystick all the way around. It's very smooth and transitions nicely. But if you want to pull back into the right and have your robot actually go back into the right, basically you just monitor if the joystick before mixing is below the center of the graph and then you flip which side of the robot you're sending the power to. So very simple change if you prefer that style of driving. I just threw that into the simulator here. Uh, so I myself could try it out and test it out before I ever even threw it into a robot. So I hope this project in this video helps you out, helps you visualize what's going on there. And we'll put the equations into and instructables that will go along with this tech tip video. As always, if you have any questions, send us an email to tech at servocity.com.